Hi, it's Thomas Sellers Jr. and it's our 2021 playoff preview at West Ham Media. We got quite a few teams that made it to the postseason and um, I need some help to break it down. Got a couple experts in the house today and also John. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. John knows what he's talking about too. But I'm joined by Mark Healy and, and John, um, yeah, the familiar face of owner John. He's here and we're going to talk um, public school playoffs and then we're going to invite our next special guest, Matt, and we'll break down the private schools. So, Division One Class 3A first round, a team that you're familiar with from being nearby. The Covington Chargers take on the Raleigh Egypt Pharaohs at Covington. Break it down, guys. Who y'all have? Raleigh Egypt's got a very strong running game. Okay. Um, I don't know if they've got enough to beat Covington, though. Covington has been a well-oiled machine going back for a number of years now. If, if you think about success and tradition in this area, mm -hmm. they're right up there with anybody. The only thing they don't have to show for it is a gold ball. They don't have that ring yet. Yes. You know, they, they, they've been up there numerous times. They can't get over the hump. Of course, when you've got the 6,000-pound beast called Alcoa there, it uh, makes it awfully tough to yes. do that. Uh, I don't think they'll have any problems whatsoever with Raleigh Egypt. So, okay, so John, how do you break that down? Like Mark said, you know, Raleigh Egypt is a good story this year. You know, they started off the year 0-3. Uh, they played some tough teams down district to get them ready for the region. You know, they played the MUS pretty tough, but uh, Carville they be down on <laughs> Carville. Well, that game, remember that Carville game was not scheduled right right well, they, away. But they either, took on so. that challenge. So they took it. on that challenge and stepped up to the part and played Carville. So, but yeah, but like Mark said, Raleigh's got a strong running game. They started off like I said, zero and three, but they got some good re wins in a region. But Mark, like Mark said, I think Covington's nothing against my friend Larry Hurd, a Bart alum. But who's also a defense line coach at Raleigh Egypt? But you gotta get. I think it's gonna be more players for Covington, more depth at different positions, like the running game for Covington, the three main monster running game yeah. for Covington that could prevail in that one. And yeah, so we got our we got Covington a seventy percent chance to win that on our playoff preview. Okay, next in three A, the number three seed Millington Trojans take on the number two seed Tresman Bears at Raleigh Egypt Stadium. As a proud Pharaoh, I will be heading out that way to my old stomping grounds to watch this matchup. We have it, Millington, a 53% chance of winning. Do you think that's right, Mark? I think anything can happen with this Millington team. Um, they've been consi more consistent lately. Um, but, you know, you're sometimes you have those teams that they have to do everything exactly right, and there is no room for error. Um, in order to win a ball game, That's you right. can't drive down the length of the field and not get points. Or just you can't, three. Yeah. right? You can't continue to commit penalties and turnovers and give the other team a short field to work with. Um, they have the Trojans have been playing well. Uh, so has Tresman. Tresman, um, you know, going in that last week, East beat them um, to uh, knock them down to second. But uh, they've had a really good year. Yeah. Uh, ought to be a very interesting ball game. Okay. So. Not so fast, my friend. But uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. But the game, no, the reason I brought that thing up is because, according to Mark, the game might be moved from Raleigh to a different stadium. Mm -hmm. So okay. keep that in mind. Be on the lookout for all news related to Millington High School this week regarding that. Yeah, MillingtonTrojans dot com and Millington dash news dot com. So yeah, we work as a tandem. There we go. Yeah. But anyways, I uh, talk about the game real quick. Like Mark said, anything could happen regarding Millington. Like we talked about, you know, Millington's a young team. So hopefully they don't get no crazy penalties because it's their first actual playoff game. And it could go down to special teams. And right now I think Milton's got that edge with a kicker at special teams. You know, yeah. Coach Michael's son. So Chase, it could very come Chase down Michael's to special teams. Chase done very well in his first full year as the kicker. Uh, defense has been playing um, a lot better, a lot better lately. Um, you know, you throw out the game against Dyersburg, which they've beaten everybody this year and beaten everybody pretty handily. Um, Trojans are playing pretty well. Okay. Now, some people say Dyersburg should be in 5A, the way they're playing. So we move <laughs> on to 5A, and a couple teams in the Millington Stars coverage area have made it. At the number four seed, Brighton Cardinals at 6 and 4, take on the Region 7 champion, Springfield, at 8 and 2. They had to head up there to Springfield. Does Brighton have a chance? Will they bring their defense? <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Brighton can put points on anybody. Yes. But I don't think they can stop anybody, mm. and I think Springfield will do enough to do, do enough to um, 
Brighton's been fun to watch this year. <laughs> there, 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 have been, there have been a lot of crazy games. Braxton Sharp, the running backs, yeah, they had Right. Nick Harden, um, yes. I just don't know if they've got a – and Springfield is usually pretty good. I think this is Springfield's first year in 5A. I think mm -hmm. they've been in 4A. Yeah. And Haywood and, and Springfield had butted heads in the past. And Springfield's kept Haywood from going – to the uh, to the championship game morning, yeah. uh, a couple of times, uh, so um, you, you'd like to see the area kids win, but it's it's going to be a tall task. Okay, like Mark said, you know Brighton has put points on the board. The main thing is is the defense going to stop someone on third down conversions to get them off the field. And like the example, the North Point game this year, like seventy four to fifty nine in regulation. In regulation, the basketball to fifty at Dyer County. Yeah. But yeah, so. Like Mark said, it's going it's to come down to third down conversions for Brighton defense to get off the field. Well, you know, in special teams, too, because yeah. you know, on that game against North Point, North Point had three kicks, I think, returned for touchdowns, yeah. three onside kicks, yeah, and, and, and you know, after Brighton had scored to go 74 61 with about a minute left, yeah. or North Point scored to make it 74 69, got yes. the onside kick, had, had a chance to win it, yeah. and yeah. good. Special teams have to be, this time of year, November has to be short yeah, up. About that time, kick the ball out of bounds, let them have it on 35. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so we move on to the next 5A matchup. Brighton's rival, Mumford, at 8-2. They're the region 8-5A champions, and they get to welcome Portland at 4-6 and six to Tipton County. Now, we got Mumford a 71% chance of winning this game, but Mumford, they had tough times in that first-round playoff game in the past few years. They have, especially since uh, you know they, they've been in 5A and then they've been matched up with this region that they're playing now. The last two years, they've been beat by Clarksville. Uh, in the years past, they've won a game, and then they've had to face Henry County or they've had Henry County in, the sec in that first-round game. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it tough. Uh, they seem like they're clicking on all cylinders now. Now... You can ask Coach Calhoun, just like anybody else. He'll tell you that their league isn't as strong as everybody else. But the, the win against Central was impressive. Yes. Uh, they're one of the – they're probably the team that's played Dyersburg the closest this year at 27-24, and they were up on Dyersburg at the half in that game. Wow. Uh, the only team that has really handled them all year was Covington. That was first game of the season. That's a rivalry game. You throw that out, out, out the window. Um you like Mumford's chances, but just just so the Mumford people know, and, and what they the two the two words they don't like to hear yeah. are Henry County, and if you win, you're going to get Henry County in the second round. Yeah. But, but the difference is they have to come here. No sirens. They might bring the sirens with them, but they, got, they, they have to come to T County. Albert White and and and, and a, a spiritual leader, but a leader on the field. Jordan Bell, who was 14 at the time they played Covington. Finally got his birthday. He's starting to mature each and every single play out there on the field. John, what you got to Thomas, add? like you said, Jordan Bell has definitely got better each game this season. Uh, he's about running the ball, throwing the ball, you name it. He's done pretty much a lot of stuff lately. Uh, so for being a 15-year-old sophomore, like you said, Thomas, you know, he's just done – and playing on a basketball team. So he's done pretty much, pretty much. I think that's the key player for that playoff game against – I think you're right because I think that they've shown they can score on anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, they were down two touchdowns to Central and got that touchdown to get within two and then got the onside kick and went down and kicked the field goal. So they've, they've had their own form of adversity that they've been able to overcome. Sooner or later you run up against somebody that's going to stop part of your game, whether it's the running game or the passing game. What you can do with that other half will dictate whether or not you're able to move on in the playoffs. All right, and for me, seeing Mumford a couple times, I think they're a full team that can potentially make a nice little run. So we're going we're gonna to close out quickly with the 6A. Go three and out because I know my cameraman is getting tired over there. A lot of people, <laughs> we don't have a tripod. We have arms here. So so Houston, Summit. Houston goes to Summit. Who y'all got? Real Summit. Quick. Summit. Okay. But again, Houston, you know, people need to really give this to Gall Twins some credit as well because mm -hmm. over the years, you know, they basically have led Houston in the playoff contention, you know. And for them to have no offers to me is still crazy. So people just definitely need to watch some film on them and get some college offers. Yeah, it, it's just like we talked about before, it just goes to show you, you can be a great high school player and not get any offers just because of your size. You're, in, you're that tweener, you're in between, mm -hmm. you might have to change the position. You know, the funny thing is about the Stigall twins is they're not probably not going to be the best twins. on. Summit's got a pair of twins, and one guy's probably Mr. Football candidate, and they are dynamite. Wow. Okay. The next one, Brentwood comes to Germantown. Who we got? Toss-up, in my opinion, but uh, 
to be honest with you, I think it really is a toss-up just because Germantown didn't make play in the postseason last year due to COVID. Uh, they are led by you know Jones at running back and receiver, linebacker. He does it all for Germantown, the Michigan commit. But uh, Coach Robinson, I think, will definitely get his team hopefully ready for the playoffs through the playoff coaching experience with the Bulldogs. And they play a tough schedule, so I think they're ready. So I think Germantown might prevail at home. I, I think you're right about the, you know especially because of the tough schedule. They they played those upper echelon of private schools, and you know that's a different level of football. And just as it's a different level of football in the middle of the state, yes, and coming down there, and they're a little bit more polished in the middle of the state where they can do both run and throw the ball. Where a lot of teams are one or the other down here, they usually can't put everything together. Yeah. Uh, but I think the Germantown's defense is is good enough uh, for them to get the win. Okay. And lastly, in public school. A team that did put everything together this season, Carville Dragons at 10 and 0, Region 6, um, Region 8, 6 champions take on Independence at 4 and 6. Independence is a dirty word out there in Millington. We, we remember back in 07. <laughs> but who's gonna win this? Hey, that's been how many years ago? 14. Wow. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Um, you, you have to like Carville here. And the funny thing, I was talking to somebody about about them earlier today. Joe Riccone's got a great defense. They call them the Doomsday Dragons. All the time he was at White Station, he really didn't have that great a defense. <laughs> he had some great offensive players yeah, like Dylan did. Mitchell, yes. but he didn't have that great of a defense. Wow. But now he's they put it all together, and you have to like their chances going to the going to the next round. And, and they got a real man running the ball, Mr. Troy Martin. John, you think mm -hmm. he can control the tempo? You just said it to me. I think, like you said, Mark, Carville defense this year from top to bottom has been stood out to me. When you hold Germantown to how many points? What was well, zero, I think. But uh, yeah, twenty-two zero. When you hold Whitehaven to six points, and that was the first score, pretty much on that drop, the first drive of the game, holding Whitehaven to six points. Uh, hopefully, like you said, Thomas, Mr. Martin would get his running game going and score some more touchdowns. Hey, Thomas L. Jr. back, and now we're going to look at our private schools. And Matt, hey, thanks for joining us. And uh, you, we know you cover the Panthers normally, but you keep your ear to what's going on throughout football in the area. So we're going to get you to help us break down our private schools. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with Division II, Single A, my Tipton Rosemark Academy Rebels, who I'm very proud of. They have to travel to Friendship Christian. Who y'all got in that game, you guys? Uh, Thomas, it's going to be a tough game, I think, for the Rebels, just because they're traveling, you know, like two to three hours on a game day on a Friday night. You know, the X factor in that game would definitely be the quarterback play for Rosemark and definitely Tyler Boyd, hopefully for the Rebels, can have a good game as well for the Rebels. Well, I know Tyler Boyd would like to not have to worry about basketball too soon, <laughs> but painful and the quarterback that you mentioned, he's the one leading rushes in the area and on that team, so dual threat. So, John brought up a good point, and I think it's going to make a huge play in all these, Matt, travel. You have to pack up equipment, go cover these things. How, yes. how tough is travel on everybody who's involved? Travel stuff, especially when you're on the road on a playoff game. I mean, everything is it's all or nothing. You've got to you know win or or call it a season. That puts an extra bit of stress on on everybody, coaches, players, you name it. So that certainly takes an extra bit of toll when you've got to go on the road and and, and, and go out and get a W. But um, I, I know the Rebels have been on a real upward swing. Right. I, I, I got to give them a real good shot at it. Okay, we have friendship at sixty two percent. Now our other um, single A team in Division two. FACS Crusaders, another young upcoming team with a young coach. They have to go to Jackson Christian. They lost to them 47-6 in the early in the season, but this Crusader team is much improved. How y'all see it playing out? Okay. Like I said, I mean, like they, they, they have certainly been much improved. I know they have uh, worked exceedingly hard, like you said, I mean, over the course of the season. But like, when you go on the road like that, that, that makes, again, we just talked about it, how hard that is. I mean, um, Everybody's got a shot going into it, but going on the road, I, I, I have a hard time uh, going with them on that one. Like you said, you know, with Millington, Mark, um, FACS is one of the younger teams in the Memphis area as well this year. But kudos to Mr. McDaniel from Barlett High School, who came from, uh, is now at FACS being their head coach, from a zero win season last season to making the, season, uh, making the playoffs this year. I've only won four games, but the way they have competed every game this year. And just basically just never gave up to me is basically an accomplishment for FACS. But like I said, no hard feelings much. But I, I get picked Jackson Christian just because they've been in that experience before. Well, and it's a big step. I mean, I mean, this is a big step for FACS. Yes. Making to, the, to this to this point now, seeing what you can go beyond that. Okay. Now we move on to Division Two AA. 
And we have Davidson Academy. We'll have to travel to ECS. State champions from a couple years ago, 6-3, and three, up and down season. Both of these teams are very close. We have ECS winning about 52%, only solely because they're a home team. Like, like you said, Thomas, I think ECS prevails at home just because Coach Adams and uh, the running back Greenwood and Tucker White, and I think that's why the Eagles prevail at home. I know they lost a tough one last week to St. George, 7-6. to six, But, heck, I think the, they've been in that background before where they've won a state championship, like you said, and hopefully the Eagles prevail. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My, my girlfriend's an ECS alum, so she would that, 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. I'd be happy if I, if I picked anybody but the Eagles. Okay. But but they, uh, yeah, I think I'm with you on that one. I think they have to take the W at home. They've been been on a roll. Okay. So a smart man there. Okay. Then we move <laughs> on to Division Two Triple A. Barcrest nine one. They have a bye as the West number one, along with the other two um, East and Middle teams. They get a bye, so all the other teams must play. The East number five, five Father Ryan. Six and four would take on the West number four, MUS Owls at six and four. So they got to come to Memphis. We have MUS with a 59% chance on that. Be all great. That's a tough, tough game, like you said, man. Toss that coin there, yeah. John. Boop. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but, uh, programs, yeah. uh, Coach Austin, you know, they made it to the state title game, you know, last year. But uh, I don't really think it's a toss up. It all depends on their quarterback play. He's been playing. playing up and down all season long. You know, one game he'll throw over 300 yards like he did against Brooklyn Academy, but they still lose the game due to maybe turnovers or giving up the big play on defense because you got to remember, Thomas, they only got one defensive starter back on that team. Yeah, that's true. So, go Owls. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so our next uh, matchup, we talk about young teams, FACS Millington, St. Benedict Eagles, very young team. Winless this season, but they, they had to be put in the playoffs because of their classification. They had to travel to Pope John Paul II, 6-4 uh, and four team, but this team is a very solid team. Is it another tough lesson for the Eagles? I think, I think it's, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it's tough, too. I mean, that, they, they had a lot of numbers issues early in the year. I think there were some COVID situations there and just – uh, and 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 you, you would give them a lot of credit. They kept on fighting. I mean, they kept. They put playing. up twenty-one points against Christian Brothers. So yeah, they're, they're playing better. They're playing better yes. at the right time. It, that's a tough draw. Okay. To, on the road. Yeah. People just gotta give the alum, alumni, alumnus a, a chance. He'll do a magnificent job over time. I think, Absolutely. I think so. Okay. And our last matchup that we're gonna look at in the first round, Christian Brothers. We're used to them having games here in Memphis, or even having that bye. But they have to travel to Knoxville Catholic, and they're five and four. Christian Brothers six and four. We are giving that Knoxville Catholic a 53% chance win, mainly because our team has to travel six hours across the state. Yeah, most years I would just say, you know, go with CBHS, you can't go wrong uh, because they've just been so dominant. But like I say, that's a long way to travel to play a team that's got a good chance to win in a, in a head-to-head matchup anyway. Um, so, I mean, in, in my heart of hearts, I want to go with the – Area team with CBHS just because I know what they've done in the past few years, but mm-hmm. that, that, like I said, that, that's tough going on the road, John. I know. I want to pick Christian Lures also, but the travel to Knoxville Catholic, six hours, like you said, Thomas, a different time zone on top mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. You know, because we're in central time zone, Knoxville's in eastern time zone. So to me personally, you know, in years past, I've seen area teams like they do travel like six hours away or even go to the state championship for Cookville in years past mm-hmm. or this year in Chattanooga. I would do like a halfway travel day and stay like in Nashville and maybe work out at like a local college or something like that and do like a walk through like on that Thursday night as well just to get your guys ready for a Friday night atmosphere in a hostile environment in Knoxville. But like you said, Matt, Chris Myers has the star running back in Dallin Hayden, the Ohio State commit, and I assume the quarterback is back. But Chris Myers has like been a big disappointment year in, year out and not making it past the first round. Mm, yes. So up there for him. Well, I definitely hope that Chris Myers does prevail, but my heart tells me right now it's the big Knoxville Catholic because it's in Knoxville. Well, let's give a little hope to Christian Brother. Knoxville Catholic has dropped four out of the last six games, so mm-hmm. they're not playing as consistent as they have been. And Christian Brother ended the season with a big win, uh, you know, to build some confidence. So they might have a shot. And, John, I like your suggestion for the private schools. I guess they can use their private school budget to have a walkthrough. Our, our private schools can't do that. They'll give us some big trouble if they try to do something like that. But we have such a long state in the state of Tennessee. But like Mark alluded to, we've got good 6A battles in the first round. Like un- Unlike years past, our private school battles, they're getting the big trips out of the way. They might come back this way. So there's going to be a lot of great action going on throughout the month of November. So uh, um, like I told um, online at Millington-News.com, 
get your popcorn ready and your hot cocoa because it's gonna be cold Absolutely. out there. Yeah. And get out there and catch one of these games and um and, and support your local athletes. Hey, the next NFL star is out there. I cover George Olam, uh, uh, who's playing for the Colts at Millington. Alan Cross. You know these guys that I cover on a weekly basis and I consider them good friends. And you never know who's going to be the next stud out there. And there's a guy, um, Kenneth Walker, up at Michigan State that's a Heisman Trophy candidate, Arlington High School. So go out there and catch him. Get an autograph. And you never know, it might be worth something. And, hey, go support the kids. They chase their dream of getting that gold ball. And we'll catch you next time. And, hey, we'll be here to wrap it up and see who won all these championships in about a month.